Hi everybody. In this video I would like to talk about some basic combinatorial identities. And combinatorics is something that one of my professors described to me as counting without counting. To explain what that means, uh, let me tell you a quick little story from when I was a young child. I used to, my mom played a trumpet and I used to enjoy looking at this trumpet and I, I had no idea how it worked mostly, but what I, one thing I did know was that it had three keys. And I knew that by pressing certain keys and not pressing others, you can change the sound that comes out. And so one question that I asked myself when I was really young was, how many different ways are there to press some keys and not others? How many combinations of keys are there? So um, I ended up kind of just thinking about all of them and trying to count them all up, and I ended up with seven. Now, the correct answer is actually eight. And I can show you why the correct answer is eight pretty easily. Um, first of all, look at this first key. I, I, I have two choices when I'm looking at that key. I can either press it or not press it. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say I have two choices there. But for each choice that I have, for each option that I have there, I have another choice to make for the second key. For that one, I could either press it <coughs> or not press it. So for each of these two options, we've got two more options, meaning we multiply them together, meaning just for these first two keys, there are four, uh, four ways that I could have them positioned. And then I've got this third key that I could either press down or leave open, and that doubles the number of options again. So really, I have eight options. And as you can see, I've multiplied each of these together because every time you have a new choice, you kind of double or, um, in this case, we're doubling because we have two different choices, up or down. We're doubling the number of possible arrangements that could be made from these three keys. And that this example does a few things. First of all, it explains kind of what combinatorics is. Um, it's, it's counting without counting because instead of uh, writing down each individual possibility and adding them all up, I just um, use this technique to show that there are 2 times 2 times 2, 2 to the third, or 8 different ways that I could arrange them. And it can be a lot faster to figure something out this way than to write down every single possibility, especially when you are, say, trying to figure out how many possible hands you can have if you have maybe a deck of cards with 52 cards and you're picking 5 of them. So... This is, this is basic combinatorics, and what I just demonstrated to you was something called the multiplication rule, or um, some people call it the uh, basic principle of counting. And that principle says that when you have a certain number of choices, in this case I have two choices that I could make for this first key, either, either up or down, and then for regardless of which choice you make, you're going to have another choice, kind of come to another fork in the road where you can have this next one either up or down, or maybe you'll have three choices or however many choices, I don't know, um, in this case two, then you multiply those together. And if you have a third choice, you multiply the number of options there, and it just keeps multiplying so that the more decisions you have to make, the more possible sets of decisions there are. Another way to apply this multiplication rule would be, say, if I have um, maybe a word that has four letters, and I have just the letters A, B, and C to put in this word. And I, I don't. It doesn't have to be any word in the English language. So you know, uh, any any combination, even if it has you know doubles or triples or all the same letter, or whatever. Uh, so how many different uh, possible words are there? Well, for the first uh, spot, there are three different letters that I could put in the word. So I could put A, B, or C. So there are three different uh, things that could go here. For the second spot, there's also three that could go there. And so I'm going to multiply those together because I have three options here, and I can kind of show you if I have a word that begins with A, a word that begins with B, and a word that begins with C, that each of these is going to split, and this could turn out to be a word that begins with A, B, a word that begins with A, A, or a word that begins with A, C. Similarly, these ones would also split and uh, I end up splitting from 3 to 9, and then if I have this third, I have three options for this third letter, and I could split again, and again. So that's um, an explanation of the multiplication rule, and you can apply it to different scenarios. You don't always have to have the same number of options in each, uh, in each choice that you make. So let me give you another example. Um, when I was young, my parents used to read me from the Chronicles of Narnia. 
And there's a little bit of controversy with that uh, series about which order you should read the books in. Some people like to read it in the order that it was written, um, which is the correct way, and some people like to read it in chronological order. Um, and then, But then there are, of course, other orders. You could read it in any order. You could read any of the seven books first. And the question is, how many different possible orderings are there of a series with seven books? So how many? Let's see. We've got one book that you have to read first, so we'll stick that one here. A book that you have to read second. You have to read one third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and you've got the book you read last. So I'm going to try to use the multiplication rule to answer this question. Well, first, you have to choose which book you're going to read first. And of course, there are seven different possibilities because you could start anywhere. But once you've chosen that, there are only going to be six possibilities for you to choose for your second book because you're not going to read the same book twice. Your goal is to get through them. And then, of course, there are going to be five possibilities for your third book because you've already read two and you only have five left. And we multiply these together because each time you make a decision, it splits again like it did above and in the above example. And we multiply the number of choices together, and we'll keep multiplying. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. Once you get to the last two books, you only have one choice to make, two books. Uh, and then when you get to the very last book, you don't even make a choice. You just read whatever's left. So and this, um, what does that work out to? I think it's 5,040. So that's the number of possible orderings for a book with, or a series with seven books. And that we do have a nicer notation for uh, multiplying one number by all of the numbers beneath it. We call that seven factorial. And we use the uh, we use this exclamation point to denote the fact that we're just multiplying the seven by every single number that's beneath it. And that saves us a lot of time when we're writing stuff out. So in general, when we're talking about arrangements of objects, maybe you're arranging books on a shelf, trying to figure out how many ways there are to line them up. We can use the factorial um, because each time you make a choice, the number of choices that are then available to you decreases. Now, now suppose you had three books on a shelf, or you had a, sh a shelf and you had a space on your shelf for three books, and you, ha you still have seven books, uh, and you've got to choose which set, which three of those books you're going to put on this shelf. And you've also got to choose which order to put them in. Well, how many choices are there in that situation? Well, then, again, you'll have seven choices for your first book because you have seven to pull from. Um, and then you'll have six choices for the second book. So we multiply those together. And then you'll have five choices for your third book. But then we don't have any more choices, right? We've exhausted the three spaces on our shelf. And we're not going to keep multiplying this four times three times two times one. So, and that adds up to 210, by the way. Well, there is also a notation, or th there's also a way that we can write out something like this. And, that, and the easiest thing to do is to write 7 factorial as if we had 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then divide that by 4 factorial. And the reason for this is that if we divide by 4 factorial, we're dividing by 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And you can see that this, well, of course, ones don't really make a difference but in fractions. These twos will cancel because that turns into one, that turns into one, this turns into one and cancels. And what we're left is the seven times six times five that we originally wanted. So often, if we want to uh, express something like this, where a thing is multiplied by successive numbers that are uh, one unit less than the previous uh, number, but we're not going all the way down to 1, as we are in the above case. We'll take a factorial, but then we'll divide it so that we can kind of cancel out all of the lower terms and the term that we're looking for. So in this case, 5 is the lowest term. We want to cancel everything lower. And it's kind of helpful when you're working with factorials to think about the fact that factorials are all contained in each other. So this 4 factorial is already contained in the 7 factorial. And when you divide it, you just kind of chop off that lower part and leave yourself with the top part that you're, that you're looking for. So today we've seen the multiplication rule, or basic principle of counting, and looked at several of its uses, including factorials, which often arise as a result of the multiplication rule. So thank you for watching. In the next video, I would like to use all of this information to show something called the choose function, which is a really cool application of this stuff that we've been talking about.